Oh. Hey all you people, what's going on? Today I'm going to show you a really easy and cheap way to help prevent carbon deposits from building up in your gasoline direct injection engine. Most modern cars have gone from using port injection to direct injection. Port injection is when the injectors spray the gas upstream of the intake valve, while direct injection utilizes the placement of the injector where it sprays gas directly into the cylinder. Direct injection was done to increase fuel efficiency and performance. The issue with direct injection is that the gasoline, which is a solvent and actually a really good cleaner, bypasses the intake valves, thus allowing oily residue from blow-by to be baked onto the valves by the heat of the engine. This is the carbon buildup. With port injection, the gas being sprayed over the intake valves keeps them free of oil and therefore carbon. And because of this discovery, a lot of manufacturers now are doing port and direct injection into their engines to help keep the valves clean. A good example of this is in Ford's EcoBoost engines, which actually had a large issue with carbon deposits in the early developmental years of those engines. But for those of us who are stuck with our GDI engines, it's really important to stay on top of these carbon buildups before they get too bad and start creating performance problems. This is where Seafoam comes into play. And no, not the seafoam that you pour into your gas tank. Everyone thinks it's that for some reason. If you poured seafoam in your gas tank, it would just be sprayed into your cylinders, bypassing the valves anyhow. So this is the Top Engine Cleaner and Lube Seafoam. I got this at Walmart, but you can get it at O'Reilly's, uh, any auto parts store really. And what we're going to be doing in this seafoam is spraying it into our intake via a vacuum line. The seafoam is designed to stick to the carbon and kind of loosen it up as it dries. There's other brands that'll do this too, but I've just had really good luck with the seafoam. So, okay, so I'm taking this vacuum line off the PCV because it bypasses the throttle body and goes directly into the intake. You can still spray this over the throttle body, but it's better if you can just go straight into the intake like this. Now, this is a partner project. You're going to need someone to help you hold the throttle at 2000 RPM between seven and eight minutes. The duration for this to empty. Now, if you don't have any friends or loved ones, you should have just bought a port injected car. Everyone knows that. Literally everyone knows that. So what I'm doing here is using an old sock to help seal up this vacuum leak here. You can use a towel or an old t-shirt or whatever, but this keeps the suction in the vacuum line. Now your partner's gonna hold the throttle at roughly 2000 RPM, try and keep it steady while you spray the seafoam into the intake. All right, 2000 RPM. The exhaust should get a bit smoky. That's okay, it just means the seafoam is all up in the car system. And after about seven or eight minutes, check and see how empty the can is. And if you're good, you can have your trusted partner shut the car off. You can shut her down. And then you can hook back up the vacuum line and stick the engine cover back on. I know the can only says to do this for 10 minutes, but let the car cool down for about an hour or so, or even longer if you want to. After the time is up, start the car and take it for a spirited ride. The car might bog down at first, but keep on the throttle so the engine can spit out the sea foam and those nasty carbon buildups. Drive it for about 10 minutes. The darker the color of the smoke coming off the exhaust, the more effective the sea foam was. And hopefully your neighbors don't think there's a fire. Then I ran out, I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. Instructions say take it on the highway, but really just make sure the engine warms up and you can do a couple strong pulls. I've been doing this for a year or two now. Uh, every couple oil changes really. And I'm at 137,000 miles with a stage two unitronic tune on this car. So far, I haven't had any carbon buildup issues. So that's why I think this works pretty well. I need some sort of wood, wood to knock on. If you let too much carbon build up and then you try this, it could lead to a clogged catalytic converter or damaged piston rings. So it is very important to try and keep up with this as much as you can. Another good tip is to buy the proper oil for your car. I've been using this Castrol GTX for a while because it's specifically meant for direct injection turbo engines. And there's a couple other brands uh, that the oil chemist designed an oil that is more resistant to building up on those intake valves and developing carbon deposits. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out a little bit. Consider subscribing and liking the video. Leave me a comment if you want to. And remember kids, say no to carbon. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> Alrighty, take care now. Bye bye then.